Your boy Ziggler Wiggle, you understand me? Back at you like I left some. Look at you, check this out. No Lazine TV, you understand me? We represent New Orleans. This man traveled all over the world, but he, in the name of Jesus, we believe. No Lazine TV, Ziggler Wiggle. We getting it in and we getting it out of our system. Well, what's up, man? This your boy, Hot Boy Ronald, and you watching No Lazine TV. Let's get it started. So like growing up back in the day, like it would tell us like who influenced you it before us to like, you know, it would just get I'm gonna get to the music business. Well, growing up in a project, I used to dance a lot, you know what I'm saying? Like, I used to be a cold blooded fucking dancer, dog. I ain't gonna lie. That's something I love doing. I used to love dancing before I started rapping. So uh, me, Willie Puck and a couple of other guys, man, we used to always get together and go to like uh, like dances, like the school dances and stuff, and and, and it used to be the main attraction in the in the school. You hear me? At the dances, dancing and stuff, man. So uh, you know, I used to like dancing before I started the music. But when I got into the music, I moved from the Desire Project to the Magnolia Project, and that's when I started, you know, running with Juvenile and Soldier Slim. All of them was my 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 boys. That you know, we used to sleep by each other houses and all that, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we, we ran together. Well, me and Magnolia Slim ran together first. A lot of people don't know that. I used to sleep by his house, he used to sleep by my house. His mom was, was real good friends of my mama, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, everybody went off, started doing their thing with the music thing. So, Jew and I wind up getting hot. And, um, you know, I wanted to be like I wanted to be like Juvenile. Put it like that. You hear me? Even though I used to hang with him, but he the one influenced me to you know getting into the music thing. You know what I'm saying? Then I start running with Kilo. So Kilo would went swingy to Swingy Keys, Swingy Keys, and all that girl. <laughs> oh no, it, it was before yeah, the Swingy Keys. Yeah, it was out there. The I just always mess with people when I be like, man, would you swinging your keys? I just yeah, mess with nah, people. Nah, it was way before all that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know, Kilo the guy hot man, and man, Kilo used to be hollering, man. You know what? Kilo made a song called Who's That Nigga with Them Big Red Shoes? That's my Ronald. Then they start calling me the hot boy around. I say, oh man, all right, so look. I just. But before you go forward, like, as you said, what, like Big Red Shoes? Yeah. Oh. Not Big Red. I used, <laughs> red was my color. Oh. <laughs> and everything I used to have on used to be red. I'm talking about from the shoes and everything. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, I, just, I, I didn't want you to go too far. Yeah, I wanted yeah, to hear about yeah, these red right, shoes. Right. So that's, that's, where, that's where that song comes from. You know what I'm saying? So, man, it, it was just on from there, you know? So, so, like, just even, like, the New Orleans bounce culture, like, you know, it, it, like, to the world don't know, like, you know, bounce music actually, only I mean, before the big freedoms and, and certain, certain people, mm -hmm. it, 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 like, bounce music was actually, it was actually rapped by, it, like, dudes in the streets. Yeah. And, like, most people don't really know that. Like, yeah. you know, the juveniles, the Magnolia Slims. Partners in crime. Partners in crimes. Partners and crimes mm -hmm. You know, Fifth Wall Weave. It had a lot of people yeah. that was... They had ties to the streets, but like, but they like enjoyed dancing and like wanted it. It just wanted people to have like a good time. Good time, right, right. So you know, like, like you know, like, it like versus not like in New Orleans, like you know these yeah, artists, like I ain't doing that gay music, but right. they realize that it's not gay music. It's not. It's, see, that's where everybody got it messed up at, bro. Bounce music is not all gay music, man. When we started the bounce music, it, 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 we ain't started it off with, 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 with the gay stuff, you know what I'm saying? But the gay people just start, you know, getting on it and, you know what I'm saying? Like, start doing it. Taking it level. Of, yeah, taking it to a whole nother level. Like, far as old school bounce, like from, like what you say, from the Fifth Wall Weave, I'm talking about like the Joe the Black, Lil the Lil L, uh, who else? Mir X, you know what I'm saying? Like, DJ Jimmy, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it never was on that. You know, at that time it wasn't on that on that like big free to kick and, and all right. that other stuff. You know what I'm saying? But you know, it's 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 still all good though, you know. We still mess with the gay people too. What do you think like the difference is from like putting out music back in the day versus now? Well, it's 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 different now. I mean, back in the days it was it was really fun. You know what I'm saying? Like it was really it was really like you can 
you can go to a club, bro, and just get on a mic. Like at that time, with me and Chopper and Partners in Crime, all these was doing out, we was really doing our thing. We was on tour together and everything with the Miles Music. But at that time, we could get on the stage and just see one little thing, and the crowd would just react crazy to it. You hear me? Like we can't do that right now. You know what I'm saying? Like the like like the bounce artists that they got right now, and that and that's you know up and coming artists like they're on a whole nother level with it. Like we can't compete with them no more. You know what I'm saying? They like. I don't know. It's just crazy from back in the days, bro. It was easy, but right now we can't even come out with a bounce song right now because of what they got going yeah. on. You know what yeah, I'm saying? They took, they took it to a whole nother level. I mean, I'm not saying it's bad. You know right. what I'm saying? But they're on a whole nother level with it. Hey, but I think saying? just like the newer rap artists should actually like. Hey, like Pete Tomosi. Pete Tomosi. He think every artist in New Orleans should have at least one bounce song. Like, if oh, like yeah. kids are the kind of, like catering yeah, I, to the culture. Exactly. But like, a lot of these rappers don't realize this is our culture. You got to embrace it. Right, right. And I get, a, I get a lot of, like, New Orleans artists, like, gangster rappers, like, want to do songs with me. You know what I'm saying? I think they want to do it, but they don't know how. You feel right. what I'm saying? Because they, you know, with the gangster music and, you know what I'm saying? Because also, you know, I think in their mind, like, I don't want to be... Um, actually perceived as a bounce artist exactly. as well, and and that's another thing. That's that, and, and I get that a lot too. Like they always tell me, man, look, I won't do a bounce song, but I don't want people to to think I'm a bounce artist. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I think just you're right. All artists need to do a bounce song, at least one bounce song. And so, like, far as you being like a and being a rapper as well, like, did you ever I'm like regret people just able to always put you in the category as a bounce rapper? No, I love being a bounce rapper. Right. I love it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, that, that, I, I, that's what I started out doing. You hear me? I don't never want to be considered as a gangster rapper. Okay. And so let's bring it all the way back. Like, you know, I want you to tell me, um, uh, I'm like the year that you actually met Big King and signed the King's Entertainment. And I want you to tell me, I'm like the year when you actually first put out a bit your hit. How, you know, I'm like walk like around. Well, I met King, I think, and shit. Uh, I probably met King probably in the 90s. Uh, ninety five probably. I mean, so that was like way, yeah, so I've way been years, King. way before they come. Yeah, I've been knowing King a long time, man. And King always been a real good friend of mine to this day. I call him Pops. You know what I'm saying? He he got to be one of the realest dudes I, I ever met, bro. Like even when I went and did my jokes, when I went and did you know when I went and did that year and a half, King jokes me the whole time. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about faithfully. Every week sent me money. You know what I'm saying? Faithfully the whole time I was in jail. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know, when I met King, he always was a a person like with a good heart, bro. Like he'll give you his legs, bro. He'll give you the shirt off his back. And that's real, bro. You know what I'm saying? And um I met King and uh, you know, King was like, Man, I always wanna start a record label. I always wanna start a record label. So that's when we started the King's Entertainment. And uh I was the first artist, you know what I'm saying? And um well, I was the first artist that that's pop. Well, Big Slack was the first artist. No, Slack was the co cool CEO. Right. Uh, but I was the first artist that pop King's Entertainment off. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it went on from there. So we dropped the Walk Like Round in uh, I think 2001. I yeah, I was just thinking. I don't know for sure. I, like, I it's your it was, zone. I think, <laughs> it was two, I think it was 2001. We dropped the Walk Like Round. And uh. Walk Like Ronald actually got hot in Lafayette, Louisiana first. A lot of people don't know that. So it got hot in, in Lafayette, Louisiana. And I'm going to tell you how it got hot. Nigga, we left the fucking, the CD that wasn't even much all the way finished. We left it with, to DJ Doby D. Shout out to DJ Doby D. Man, DJ Doby D got that song so damn hot. So after it got hot in Lafayette, it got hot in, 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 in Baton Rouge, then Lake Charles. Then it got hot in New Orleans. And that's crazy because you you think your city will jump on your music before. And it would help you get shows too. Exactly. Right. Man, it helped me get a lot of shows. Man, I was charging twenty five hundred a show. And I speak on this like a on like to like a lot of New Orleans artists, like they don't realize that you need those small chitlin circuits to stay relevant for years. Like if like right now, you chopper style and a lot of y'all older bounce artists are still getting booked right. to this day. To this day. From doing like from building relationships, doing shows in them small cities. Right, right. It's yeah, like I was saying, you know, like I'm, I'm a different type of artist, you know what I'm saying? Like I get people calling me all the time for concerts and 
I only do certain stuff right now. I'm not gonna tell you no lie. Like if if it's a fiesta or something, uh, you know, something big, worked it. That's the only time I do concerts. I turn concerts down all the time, and people be willing to give me like a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? But I'm I'm not gonna. I don't. I really don't go in the hole in the walls no more. You know what I'm saying? It gotta be certain shit. It, 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 Cause the hole in the walls actually it was kind of not worth it. Cause you know you could actually go through so much. Going to those places. Exactly. That's what people and that, don't And get. that's the reason why. Like, I'll do a wedding, uh, you know, like an old party or something, like some old folks or something. Like, I'm, I'm about that type of stuff, but I'm not going into a hole in the walls. You know what I'm saying? Hey, but like, I think I just saw you I'm like, with the mayor, right? Yeah, American Trail. Yeah. yeah. So, like, and so, like, you know, I'm like, what's your reaction was when, like, you like, man, damn, she could. If she wrote it, if I damn, she wrote it with my song. Man, I love that lady to death, bro. Man, say, bro, they be hating on her so bad, bro. And, 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 and a lot of people don't understand, man. That lady, say, bro, she did a lot for the city of New Orleans, bro. And, bro, she saved a lot of people's lives, bro. I don't care what nobody see, man. That lady saved a lot of people's lives, bro, by closing a lot of shit down and doing shit the way she wanted you to do. You know what I'm saying, bro? Man, they don't understand, bro. I love that lady to death, man. See, bro, she, she, she did her thing, bro. That's why I'm happy to see one round two. <laughs> and, you know, I know nobody won. No, but say, but she ain't had no competition. I'm going to just be real with Yeah, that, I looked down like, I ain't, I'm like, who, who, I'm like, who she was going against? Right. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even I was, know. I just said that, like, who is she? Like, but the only person I knew was my partner, Elder, from Take Four Records. You see, know? I didn't know Elder was going for the for yeah, man. Yeah, I told her, I yeah. told her that. I'm like, I was thinking yeah. that. Elder, like, my boy. I love Elder the day, bro. I, I, I just think, you know, nobody wasn't going to win against her, bro, you know. Well, then again, she was she was in office and she built them relationships, so, you she know, did. she had a lot going on yeah, right she there. She did, man. Man, shout out to the mayor, man. Shout yeah. out to, you know, shout out to TD. Yeah, shout out to TD, man. <laughs> so, hey, see, did she whip that walk like round her? You saw on that stage, dude? <laughs> yeah, she whipped that thing, though, bro. And, and so far as your like, music career, I'm like, do you have any brand new projects coming up? Well... Man, like I said, man, I, I want to get into the music, man, but, you know, I got a couple of businesses I own, so I, it's, it's like I really don't have the time for it no more, bro. You know what I'm saying? I still love it, you know. Like I said, I still love going to do certain shows, but I ain't I ain't for it no more. Then I got kid and kids in college and stuff right now, so it's like... You got other priorities you got to pay for that? Yeah, man, school, man, huh? yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's, 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 it's a lot on my plate right now, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So, like, you know, I want you to bring it back to, like, New Orleans culture. I ain't gonna talk about bouncy. I'm talking about, like, it, like people don't realize, like, even being, like, a bouncer is getting these parties mm -hmm. lit, but they don't realize how dangerous New Orleans was in the 90s. Yeah, let me tell you something. <laughs> Where y'all think the walk like Ronald Song come from? I've been shot nine times. Nine times and still got two bullets in my back right now. You know what I'm saying? I got shot up in 97. And um, in the 90s, you heard me? <laughs> and, um, you know, I got shot over some shit somebody said I did, but I didn't do. You know, I was a crazy motherfucker at that time, but that, what they said I did, I didn't do. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I got shot nine times. I was paralyzed in a wheelchair. I was in the hospital for three months. I died and came back alive. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, damn, just sitting here thinking about that shit is crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? you're here for a reason. Yeah, I'm here for a reason, man. Man, yeah. nine times. Yeah, because bro. how you just said that you were shot in 97. 97. Yeah, but your music career didn't take off until 2001. 2001, yeah. Yeah. Hey, that was crazy. I remember that shit like it was yesterday, bro. You know what I'm saying? In the fucking 90s. Man, the 90s was crazy, bro. Yeah, because I told people, like, man, I said, man, just the stories I'm hearing, like, people getting kidnapped in front of the club, people yeah. getting killed in yeah. front, while they in line. Yeah. Real talk. Like it was like man, it was just it was just it was just a whole new Orleans. Then it like like I, it, it, it was in my mind New Orleans kind of cooled down after Katrina a little mm -hmm. bit, cause like the people that I hear that was doing all these crazy stuff before mm -hmm. before Katrina. I'm like I don't think a lot of people would actually made it. Nah. <laughs> and when I got shot, I actually was what I think I was like 18 years old when I got shot up. Mm. I was 18 years old when I got shot. Oh, so you. So, Oh, so, I mean, when your song came out, you was like 21, 22. Yeah, 21, 22. That was a little hot motherfucker then. You hear me? And so how many kids you made man, on, like, on your run? Man, leave that alone. On your hot boy run. We're going to leave that one alone. On your hot boy run. We're going to leave that one alone. You're trying to start some mess now, bro. Start some mess. <laughs> so, like, you know, like, being like the bounce. Like, let's get back to the bounce. 
Like, I want to give you, I, I, well, I want you to give like a little advice um, to one, you know, if, I want you to give like a little advice um, to one, to one, I'm an up and coming artist that's trying to follow, I'm gonna give you footsteps. Man, keep pushing, man. Keep doing your thing, man. Cause man, they had people saying walk like Ronald wasn't gonna be no hit, wasn't gonna make it, wasn't gonna do nothing. You know what I'm saying? And look at it now. I'm, it's, that song's still going. You can play that song in the club right now to this date, and motherfuckers gonna get up out their chair. Look at TikTok. TikTok just went hard off of oh, oh, walk like Ronald. You know what I'm saying? Man, keep pushing. Keep doing your thing. I actually man. wanted you to push it a little more harder. Hey, but when I see your girl from, I'm like, City Girl did it. I'm like, well, she need to. Man, he, City Girl did it. Uh, Reginae, Luane, uh, daughter. Oh, uh, man, boo cool people, man. I'm, I'm talking about, they got people on TikTok got fucking four, five million followers. And I don't, I don't know who they is. And then they, they've been doing it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And we kind of shocked. And your girl, I, what her name? Yeah. Uh, Kylie, 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 Kylie. Oh, Kylie Jenner? No, no. The little red slim girl. Kylie, Kylie Red or something? Oh, it's McCauley Red. McCauley Red, yes. He did it too. Okay. Oh, uh, a bunch of people, bro. So, like, you know, and so how did that make you feel? Like, cause like, in my mind, I thought it was like one song that would just play through the South. I right. didn't know it was known that That bitch worldwide. known, bro. You need to come out of town with me and see. Yeah. You heard me? Like, see, that's another thing. People don't know. Like, they be thinking you just... It was a local hit. Like, like, a person from the audience would think that's a local hit. Yeah, man, that bitch playing everywhere, bro. I'm talking about everywhere. I'm talking about all in Washington, D.C., bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man. Because, you know, like, when they came out, we used to check the sound scans and, like, you know, and, and, and can tell where it's playing. I'm talking about Memphis, Tennessee. They had, all them places had it in rotation, bro. Right. It was in rotation. It, like, you know, just me growing up in New Orleans, just thinking, like, man, these dudes are local dudes. But, like, it took me to, like, have conversations with Fifth Wall, we've been chopping right. to know it's, that, no, man, right. these dudes was booked everywhere. everywhere but right. you just didn't see them on TV, like yep. a mainstream yep. artist. Yep, yep. See, bro, it was crazy, though. I swear to God. At that time, I loved it, bro. I'm talking about, man, that road life was the shit, man. I'm talking about, we used to have so much fun. And, though, it used to, it used to be so crazy, bro, like... Like we went, we did a little tour thing. It was me, Partners in Crime, Chopper, Fifth Ward Weeby. Uh, who else was hot at that time? Was on our buses. It was mainly really them, you know, them artists right there. Say, bro, we used to perform. It got to the point to where, you know, Chopper was the hottest artist. So they put Chopper on last. It got to the point to where I was going on first. To mm -hmm. I went to going on last. Yeah. That's how hot I got. I done passed everybody else up. You know what I'm saying? Say, bro, I'm talking about it, it was so crazy, bro. Like, like I used to be performing, bro, and say like I'm touching a female hand in the crowd. Motherfucker passed out. I'm like, she gotta be playing. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> man, it was crazy. Like, it got to that point, bro. I'm like, man, bitch, I'm just high boy around. You know what I'm saying? I ain't nobody. Man, that shit was crazy, man. That's how that make you feel. Man, it, it, it made me like feel good, bro. Yeah, bro. It did, bro. <laughs> It did. That's why I see, bro. It just, it just was crazy, bro. I loved it every minute of it, though. Right. Okay. So speaking on fifth for Weeby, I want you to tell the world. I'm like, what's your greatest? I'm like, memory of Weeby. What? Man, I got too many of them. So I, I really can't. I really can't say I got too many of them, bro. Man, Weeby was a real legend, bro. He, I'm, I'm talking about a real legend, bro. I got too many memories of Weeby, bro. But man, every time we was on the road, though, Weeby, that's all he want to do is rip, though, bro. Oh, yeah. We even gonna rip the <laughs> fuck out you, bro. So, man, you know what? I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you one. See, <laughs> uh, Mo, will, Mo will probably kill me from this too, though. Man, fuck it. We was on the road. <laughs> man, we was on the road. So, uh, my partner Jonathan, they was in a room with a female. <laughs> We be and Mo come busting the door. <laughs> with their pants down, you hear me? Trying to get the female too, dog. Say, bro, that shit was so funny, dog, just to see we be naked, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you big body, built, built, mother, bad built motherfucker, dog. That shit was funny. I ain't gonna tell you the whole story, but just seeing we be come busting there trying to flip the girl with, with Jonathan and them, bro, that shit was funny, bro. <laughs> that shit was funny, funny, bro. So I got another, you know, I want you to take it all the way back to memory. I want you to tell the world if it's your greatest memory of growing up I mean, with a childhood Magnolia Soldier Slim. What? Man, Daryl? That's what we call him, Daryl. Man, 
That was the slang that I am, bro. A lot, <laughs> lot of people don't know that, dog. That little dude was crazy, man. Hey, but him and my partner Mike, I am. Seeing them two niggas fight, bro. That dude had some hands, bro. He, he, you know, he was about that iron. But seeing that nigga fight, man, I swear to God, dog. I'm like, man, I don't want to fight that nigga. That nigga had some hands, man. And he was tall. He was tall. Got a lot of reach. Lanky, got a lot of reach. <laughs> dog, that nigga hit that boy one time and knocked him out. Dog, I said, bitch, I'll never fight you. <laughs> I said, I'll never fight you, man. But, man, yeah, that, 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 that's one right there. Okay. It's a tell world, um, you know, I'm like, what's next for you? Shit, man, keep trying to open up business and get and keep shit flowing, man, for my family, you know? That's it, man. But, you know, and trying to stay out the way of the streets, man, because it's, it's, it's crazy out here, man. These fucking youngsters, man, they don't want to do nothing but ride, kill, and jack. I mean, you know, ride, kill, call jack, and all the other bullshit, man. They thinking that's the way, that's the way it is, but it's not, man. Okay. Well, it's speaking on, you know, all that, you know, being in the wall is like, you know, you know, being in, being in New Orleans East for certain, like, you know, actually, like, what made you choose on like a certain, on like locations to actually open up your business, if, uh, you know, if like knowing on like New Orleans East only has like a high, I mean, crime rate. Right. I mean, actually, I really, I really don't know the answer. It just, I don't know how I stumble it. Oh, I'm going to tell you how I stumble in East. I wind up getting this car wash on Dominant Haynes. From there, that's when I just, you know, by me being in the area, got cool with everybody and, you know, uh, everybody watch each other back around here, you know what I'm saying? Like, all the old cats, even the old cats, everybody carry guns around here. <laughs> everybody. It's so crazy. So, it's you know, because they watch each other back. Everybody watch each right. other back. But, you know, just get family with everybody, man, and I just saw other opportunities right, right next door. Like, I'm just like, man, I'm going to snatch that business. I'm going to snatch that business. I'm going to snatch that one. And I just went to... Everybody said, man, I'm... going crazy. Yeah, yeah and everybody, I, I, everybody said they think I'm the only nigga can get something popping in the East. <laughs> right. And I believe that, too. And so, you know, being someone who, like, people... I'm, like, respecting New Orleans. Do you feel like, you know, being in the East, do you feel like you have to, like... Like, sometimes... I'm, like, pull... I'm, like, these, you know... If, if I pull, like, these... I'm, like, younger dudes... I'm, like, to the side and just... And, it's had like a conversation with them? Yeah, I, I do that a lot. I do that a lot. I hold conversations with a lot of young cats, especially the ones that's jumping in people's calls. You know, I pull them to the side, even tell them I give them a job, you know, which that they don't want that. Yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, like, I always tell them I love them. I always tell them be careful out here. I always tell them, you know, like, you know, stay away from the bullshit, bro, you know? But, of course, Okay, on you right, on you right, right, OG or whatever, whatever. Next thing you know, they're in jail or, or, or they're dead somewhere. You know what I'm saying? And the sad part is, it's like even when, you know, most people in New Orleans when they're younger, like, it's going to take something for it really happen to you, for it really change. Like, if hopefully, but it's not too late and, like, you you die or, or actually go to jail for life right. before you actually change. Right. And that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. <laughs> And also, uh, uh, last but not least, can you tell everybody? I'm like, what can they find you at on social media and just everywhere? Man, y'all holler at me, man. Hot boy around, uh, what it is? Hot boy around nine times on Instagram, uh, uh, Twitter, uh, what is it? Five oh four. Hot boy around a five oh four. That's all. I'm, I'm just on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> I ain't telling y'all my Facebook name. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, you know, fuck with your boy. You, it's all up. Uh, no Lazine TV! This nigga been calling me, man. <laughs> Am I finally here? Finally here. <laughs> Love you, bro. For real, though. All right, we done. Lazine, make him scream. N-O-L-A-Z-I-N-E. Make him S-C-R-E-A-M. Scream. No Lazine, make him scream. You heard me.